Hey guys, it's Jim. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you're doing well today. Thanks for coming back and all that same stuff I always say pretty much at the start of every video, uh, but I do appreciate it. So thank you. Um, I'm going to do something a little different today. And if if you remember when we were launching Luminar, uh, I was involved in a number of live uh, Luminar events. They called them Luminar Live. One of them in particular that I did was called Your Photo, Our Look. And basically we asked in the Facebook group for people to submit photos that they wanted to see edited in Luminar. And so I did, uh, I think, one or two of those. And I, I gotta be honest, I had so much fun um, because half the time it's stuff I would never shoot or never get to shoot, and it was just a lot of fun. So recently, a gentleman named Roger Jackson, who's a photographer, I believe he's out of the UK, but he's done a lot of wildlife photos, and they're really beautiful. Let me just go ahead and show you his website. There we go. Now, um, this is rogerjacksonphotography.com. So uh, you can check that out and you can go to his galleries and you can see there's all these beautiful wildlife photos. It's just fabulous work. And so he asked me, he said, hey, would you wanna ever take a crack at some of my photos and just edit them and see what you come up with? So I was like, yeah, you bet. It sounds fun because I don't ever, I've literally never shot wildlife. Uh, I've been to a couple of zoos and like, who cares? That's not very exciting, right? Um, so when he offered me that, he sent me a bunch of raw files. Uh, the long version of that is I spent a number of weeks and uh, eventually thinned the herd in terms of the number of files he sent me. And yes, that was a purposeful uh, joke. Um, but uh, I thinned the herd and got it down to two photos. I'm going to walk you through those photos. Let's go ahead and do that. Again, Roger Jackson Photography, if you want to check out some of these images. I mean, I just... I think they're gorgeous, and again, it's something I would never shoot, so I think it's a lot of fun. So I've got an elephant photo and a lion photo, and I'm also going to do something a little different. As opposed to walking through each uh, slider as I move it, I'm just going to talk about it as I turn them on. I've got the uh, .lmnr, which is the native Luminar file. I took his DNG file, which is a raw file, made my edits, and saved it in the Luminar native format, and wanted to... Um, just go ahead and, and walk through this. So the first thing I notice here is that the histogram is very balanced. If you look at the light in this photo, it's very balanced. Um, it's, it's a gorgeous shot. I love how the elephant's kind of walking into the frame, how the, the baby's uh, trunk is sort of curled up, pointing at the mom. That, or I assume it's a mom, that sort of thing. I, I think it's a beautiful shot, one of the reasons I picked it. So I picked a number of um, filters I wanted to use because there's some things that I would do. Now, I'm not a wildlife photographer, so this is completely Jim just sort of pulling things out of his hat. Um, that was a nice way of saying it. Um, you know, about what I would do to the photo. You can do whatever you want, right? So uh, the first thing I did is I hit Accent AI just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of oomph. And then the very next thing I wanted to do is convert it to black and white. So there it is. And to me, that makes a big difference in the photo. Um, while, you know, let me turn that off. The colors here are actually really nice. To me, there's almost a little bit too much similarity between sort of the tannish yellow that you see in the hide of the elephant and what's in the background. There's not enough contrast for me, so I went black and white. I really want the animal to pop, and I'm gonna show you how I do that more with a couple of more filters. So I didn't touch luminance or saturation. You can see those. I didn't mess with any of those uh, color channels in the black and white filter, but I bumped up contrast quite a bit, and I pulled down highlights and whites while moving clarity up a little bit. The thing I wanted about clarity is it's great at giving a photo some depth, and that's what I really wanted to do. So I wanna to try to separate the elephants from the background. You can see how it was shot. It was shot at F5.6, so we've already got a nice kind of smooth, kind of bokeh uh, background, and the elephant uh, and their skin, which has all this wonderful texture, is really crisp. So, you know, well shot on Roger's part. I think it looks great. I just wanted to accentuate some of that. So that was the black and white filter. Next up was tone. And let me turn that off again. There's before and the after. Again, creating a little bit more of a high contrast look. I did move up the contrast, a little bit of smart tone. And then again, I took down the highlights and the whites, just trying to drive some of the brighter parts out of the photo because there, to me, again, the elephant's blending a little too much with the, uh, with the background in terms of the brightness values. So that's what I used the tone for. Now, here's uh, where it gets kind of fun. Um, next, I use the structure filter. And as you can see, I just uh, went in, I moved it up about 26, 
And let me go ahead and, and click on the brush so I can show you, and I'll show you the mask. I just painted that structure adjustment into the elephant, mostly the hide and the faces of the elephant. The legs, you know, I didn't really care as much about. You may want to spend more time on it. You know, if it's your photo, that's totally cool. But that's really what I wanted to do is I use structure to sort of bring up that crunchiness. And I'm going to hit done so that's out of the way. And I think that helps a lot. Let me show you the before. If you look like in the ear and in the hide and then the after, it's got a little bit more crunch to it, which I wanted to accentuate that sort of cracked earth look, that dry feeling of an elephant who's been baking in the sun in Africa, right? So just kind of cool. Okay, here's where it gets kind of fun, more fun to me, and that is I use structure again, but let me show you. This time I went negative 100 on amount, but positive 100, uh, 100 on softness and boost. And so let me show you the before and the after. And let me hit the mask so you can see that. You can see I created that uh, mask basically the opposite of the other mask. Not entirely because I didn't get the grass under here. I didn't really hit the legs. But roughly speaking, what I did with the first structure filter was crank up the detail and the crunchiness in the elephant's hides and their faces. And then for the second one, uh, that's sort of a little known secret of the structure filter is if you go negative 100 instead of positive, it gets softer and smoother and sort of more buttery. So let me let me hit done again and let me show you the before and after. If you look there again, to me the background is a little distracting, a little too detailed, too many color splotches and the edits I made in the previous steps sort of created a little bit more crunchiness there and I don't want crunchiness there. I want that to be smooth. I want the background to just blur out and disappear, and boom, I'm, I'm getting there. And so that's really what I did with the negative structure. Uh, so that, that works great for portraits, for skin smoothing, that sort of thing. Um, that's a, a fun tip there. And then the last thing I did was, um, I basically took the exact same mask. You can come in here and take your mask, and you can say copy, and then when you start your next filter, you can just say, you know, go here to mask and say, paste if I'd done it, and you can paste that same mask into the next filter. So that's what I uh, would do here. And in this case, I used soft focus number two, and I just bumped that up and took the brightness down. And again, I'm just blurring the background and creating a softer background feel and a little bit of a dreamy feel because I let it bleed a little bit into the legs of that baby elephant. Let me show you. You can see that there. Um, some of that's just me being sloppy. I could come in here and do a little bit finer job if I wanted to, but you know, I was just, you know, we're all friends here. I'm just kind of hacking around and having fun, but I wanted to add the soft focus because I think it accentuates the separation of the foreground element, which obviously is the elephants, um, and the background, which I'm trying to separate those and create distance. Um, a little bit of a dreamy feel too, which I like. So you can see without soft focus and with it. And you can also see that I took brightness down. And then the last thing was really just a vignette. Um, I just wanted to circle, uh, uh, not circle, um, focus and center, I guess, uh, center on those elephants and sort of the relationship between the mom and, and the baby. Again, don't know if it's a mom, I'm guessing. Um, I watch Animal Planet sometimes. Um, maybe it's a mom. But anyway, um, you can see there, I just took the vignette to the left uh, and brought the size down. And then I did add a little bit of inner light. So I wanted to bring back a little bit of that um, focus on the, uh, on the center there. And so that was really it. So I can show you the before and the after. The before was, you know, really honestly a beautiful photo um and then this is just my much more dramatic and kind of moody version uh or interpretation of roger's original photo that's what i would do um let me show you one more and it's really the same uh, actually it is the exact same filters i want you to look at something here this is a lion and i love this photo uh but it's dark so the first thing i did if you look at the histogram all the way to the left which means it's really dark and i'm you know i've never shot this stuff but the elephant oh, sorry the line is in shade. It's really dark, I'm sure, in there. And trying to get your exposure compensation correct to get the right um, exposure values got to be hard. Plus, it's not like this thing is going to pose for you and just wait. I mean, it's a beautifully framed photo. It's just dark. So the first thing I did, and uh, you, you, obviously you can tell that it's dark by looking at it, but also the histogram, it's all the way to the left. 
So I hit the accent AI filter to bring that up quite a bit. You can see the histogram change significantly. Then I did a similar thing, created black and white, and you can see the blurred out background, which, um, you know, you couldn't really see the detail because it was a lot darker, but I love how he shot this. Again, F5.6, I think that looks great. Um, but you can see the, the detail in the background bokeh sort of coming uh, to the forefront. So I don't want that. So after black and white, I did a couple of minor tone adjustments, and then I went into the same thing. Here I added structure, and this one is just in the elephant's face. Uh, let me find the mask. There it is. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did a little bit in the body as well. So I uh, did some there, and again, kind of a sloppy job. I could clean that up uh, and probably should, but not my photo. I'm having fun with Roger's photo. So that's where I added structure to bring up that crunchiness. And then here's where I start separating the, uh, the lion itself from the background. Same exact approach as on the elephant photo. Uh, negative 100 and then positive 100 for softness and boost on the structure filter. And I masked it in. And in this case, I actually masked it in a little bit tighter, more so than I did on the, the last one. I just kind of did that. So in fact, I might would actually clean that up a little bit just to get really tight around the core part of the line that I want to focus on, which is really the face and the mane. Like the legs and stuff are cool to me. I love that he's like mid stride. I think Roger did a great job of leaving open that side of the photo so it looks like the lion is walking into it, just like he did on the elephant photo. Um, and I'm just creating separation here. Uh, and then I did soft focus. Again, same thing. A little bit of a dreamy look. Uh, just kept the focus on the the mane, or most of the mane, and kind of the jowls and, and that sort of thing. And of course, the face of the lion. Uh, and then once more, a vignette, to just to add a little bit uh, darker touch around the edges because with the uh, negative structure and the soft focus, I've gotten a little bit bright there, and I just wanted the vignette to sort of tighten that up. And that's really it. So again, a before and after. The before was uh, very dark, you know, beautifully shot, just dark, and the after is a bit more dramatic, a little bit moody, uh, and that's it. So I hope you find that helpful. It's a lot of fun. Um, I can't edit people's photos all the time, but if you have some really interesting or unique stuff that I might, may never shoot, I might take a crack at it. If you like this kind of video, let me know. Feel free to like uh, like the video. Please uh, feel free to share it with your friends. Hit subscribe. And I hope you got something out of this. It was a lot of fun for me. Thank you to Roger Jackson for supplying the photos. Check out his website at rogerjacksonphotography.com. And I'll see you next time, my friends. Thanks for tuning in. See you soon and adios.